happy Monday and welcome to the 25th episode of the Sneak Preview, a Filmgasm Productions podcast that follows the current film release calendar. I'm Connor Izagari. I'm Austin Johnson. And today we are once again joined by guest host Brianna Moore. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Today we have the pleasure of discussing a Pixar movie, the newly released Luca on Disney+. Plus. We'll also say a bit about the hitman's wife's bodyguard, which was far better than it should have been. But... First, let's see what happened last week in film. Last week in film. First up, one trailer to discuss, and it's a weird one. Pig, starring Nicolas Cage as a truffle hunter with a dark past who goes searching for his beloved pig after she is kidnapped. The film co-stars Alex Wolf and Adam Arkin and is set for release on July 16th. Looks odd, but right up Cage's alley. It's basically John Wick with a pig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a trailer I don't need to even see. I'm already, I'm in. I saw a description. Somebody said, like, if you told me that Nicolas Cage was looking for his prized pig, I wouldn't know if that was a movie or a news headline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I need to see that. Yeah, this looks bizarre, but I'm very curious. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that's the same week of Space Jam 2. Oh, how about that? So we might have a new front runner now, which means only one of us, me, basically, has to take the Space Jam 2 bullet. (laughs) Oh, no, I want to watch Space Jam 2. I do. I'm going to watch that no matter what. Yeah. Okay. I watched it. I saw a trailer today at a movie uh, screening I went to see. And involved uh, Porky Pig doing a little rap. And I just, <laughs> who is this movie for? Um, um, it's, some kids out there are going to enjoy it. Yeah, so Pig looks looks intriguing. And <laughs> we'll probably take the focus of that week if it is the same week, if I'm uh, 100% on that. We've yet to, on any of these podcasts, I don't think we've yet to touch Cage. Which no, is you're right. Kind of incredible. <laughs> well, did we mention what was his last one? Wonderland. Did we mention that one at all? Or I did, no? I did. Yeah, I did watch Willie's Wonderland. That was a little bit of a aside. And then when we did the Coen Brothers film gas, and we talked about Raising Arizona. Yeah, but yeah. He's yet to have a focused episode. Yeah. Yeah. He could have his own uh, thing on Oscar Sunday for leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, he could have his own show where we just talk about Nicolas Cage films. We will never run out of material. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Um, next, some tragic news. Uh, character actress Lisa Baines was killed in a hit and run. A scooter or a motorcycle ran a red light and struck her when she crossed the intersection. Uh, she died 10 days later. She was 65. Uh, Baines is perhaps best known for his ro- her role as Mary Beth Elliott in 2014's Gone Girl. She also appeared in such films as Cocktail, A Cure for Wellness, and Young Guns, as well as a lot of TV. So this was a big shock tragedy here. Yeah, that's devastating. Gosh. Yeah. I want to watch Gone Girl again. I'm a little fuzzy on her character, regrettably. I don't remember her. I'd like to know. Well, uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be the mother, I assume, yeah. I guess, yeah, it was. I think it was Amy's yeah. mother. Yeah, I I remember that performance pretty well. Uh, uh, yeah, with uh, yeah with Amy Dunn, he yeah, has the daughter's name. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's I, I definitely remember that. Her and the dad in that one, and yeah, that that's crazy. Thinking about those ten days, you know, oh, like God. brutality. It reminds me. You remember last year or twenty nineteen? Orson Bean, the character actor, got just like ran over in yeah. New York City. It's yeah. fucking crazy that. These actors are just like people just can can get run over and like that's it snuffing out a career just like that it's fucking crazy yeah that's scary very scary so that's a shame about Lisa Baines my heart goes out to her family uh, moving on uh, Jessica Hennick has joined the cast of Knives Out two she's also set to star in the Matrix four uh, she's a more of a TV actress. Uh, she's known, uh, I know her as Colleen Wing from Iron Fist and Nymeria Sand from Game of Thrones. 
Mm, she yeah. plays kind of forgettable, despicable characters. <laughs> so I'm not sure, you know, I mean, is she going to, you know, measure up to like Edward Norton and Daniel Craig and like Janelle Monet and all these people who are joining Knives Out too? We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> Here's hoping and the Matrix Four, so her stock is rising. It's just yeah, we'll see if it if it pans out. Yeah, maybe there's something we we're we're missing, you know. Maybe. Uh, speaking of something I missed, Gerard Butler and Marina Baccarin are returning for a sequel to Greenland, currently titled Greenland Migration. It'll focus on the Garrity family leaving the survival bunker to find a new home in the post-apocalyptic Earth. Did y'all see Greenland? No, no. I haven't seen it. Me neither, because, you know, when the world was going through a global pandemic, I didn't feel like watching an end-of-the-world movie. Big shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the worst possible time for a movie like that to come out. Jesus, how well, tone deaf can you get? And, and Gerard Butler, too, is, like, not, you know, hasn't been really killing it lately. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll never forget his, like, on Jimmy Kimmel's mean tweets, he had one of the funniest ones where somebody tweeted at him, does Gerard Butler have a massive student loan or something? Is that why yeah. he does all these shit films? Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, definitely run through my head. Yeah. He's, he's not, you know, I mean, he's okay. He's not terrible. I'd watch him over like, I don't know, Steven Seagal, but yeah, he's, he's not memorable. He's always trying to not be Scottish but he is. He's Scottish. Yeah. It's hard to hide that brogue. <laughs> and then Greenland, I guess, you know, now that we're kind of done mostly with COVID, I could probably watch it now comfortably. Greenland. So maybe I'll, you know, when, when we in inevitably do the sneak preview for Greenland too, I'll, I'll watch Greenland. Yeah. Uh, you'll have to take that one for the team. <laughs> I know. Sometimes I can just tell I'm like, it's It's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be me that's great <laughs> this next one though i have a feeling everybody's gonna want in on this one alan hughes is directing a biopic of marvin gay currently titled what's going on it's been acquired by warner brothers and is eyeing a 2023 release i am very excited for this yeah it's about time yeah what the hell <laughs> it's taking quite a bit for i guess uh i guess it was what bohemian rhapsody that opened the floodgates for all these kind of musician biopics that we're finally getting yeah i'd say so yeah 2018 yeah yeah that's good at least you know this year we're getting the aretha franklin one we got a marvin gay one on the on the horizon uh i love these i love musician biopics and because most of them have very sad tragic stories behind the fame uh and i know marvin gay's story ended in unspeakable tragedy so I think this could be a really good movie. I saw, you know, I sense potential uh, Oscar buzz here. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> uh, Derek Kolstad is currently writing a potential sequel to Nobody, which was met with critical acclaim a few months back. Sequel's not yet been green lit, but he's writing it anyway. Uh, this guy's got an eye for franchises. Uh, John Wick turned into something incredible. And nobody yeah. kicked ass. So I'm totally on board to see more of that. Yeah, still haven't seen, still haven't seen nobody. Have you? Isn't that the one I wanted to see when we, like, peeped by the Bijou? Yeah, Bob Odenkirk, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. It's a, it's a fun watch. Uh, the turnaround on DVD release has been quick this year. I just picked up Godzilla vs. Kong a few days ago. And that, yeah. I feel like that just came out. So nobody ought to, yeah. if it's not out already, it will be very soon i think it is i think it is i think i've seen it just even at hb where i work so i think yeah, it's well, out then i have somewhere to go tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> um i thought this was odd mgm is rebooting the 1972 black exploitation horror film blackula it's supposed to continue where the 1973 sequel scream blackula scream left off and will take place in a post-covid world i have not yet seen blackula uh I'm wondering how, what, like what the tone's going to be. Yeah, I yeah, I don't have any. I haven't seen the movie either. Uh, just this is something that's like, is it really? Do we really need this? <laughs> do, do we? 
does the world need blackula again is that is that what's going to fix everything yeah i don't know <laughs> i kind of hope it comes out the same year as blade because i want i want memes <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, want, I want i want blade blade blackula memes yeah blade blade's gonna be great though we know that yeah that's gonna be really good uh <laughs> And finally, a new VHS film is coming from David Bruckner titled VHS 94. It will be, de- it, blah, it will be debuting exclusively on Shudder later this year. The film was shot during the pandemic and will continue the franchise's anthology storytelling. Have you all seen any of the VHS films? Yes, uh, they've run together for me. I saw them, uh, I want to say, four, five, six, you know, years ago, right? And I, they just kind of clumped together. It's fair. Anthology films are hard to kind of, you know, sing yeah. out. And if you're, but if you're a fan of them, then, you know, that's your thing and you rewatch them, you're like, oh, it's, that's important to you is, is kind of distinguishing them. But I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the first two VHS films are some of the best horror I've seen in the past 20 years. VHS viral can go straight to hell. That movie was terrible. <laughs> But those first two movies, like, there's a couple of those segments. There's one involving, like, these two guys pick up a woman who they start making out with her, and she, like, turns into a vampire and just starts ripping them apart. Like, yeah. That was nuts. And then the one involving the, like, Southeast Asian cult, that shit freaked me out. So I want to see more of that. And yeah. it sounds like that's the direction they're going in with this new one. So, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, totally, totally. And this is this is something that you feel like uh, as horror fans, I think you and I have talked about, if you're going to constantly reuse like a title or franchise something, might as well kind of retract, retract things and make it better. You know, like with Halloween, you know, it's really nice to have stuff that kind of ah, rejuvenates the, the whole idea behind why they're good movies, you know? Yeah, I think so. And I'm going to catch some heat for this. I know it. But I argue a lot of them in the horror kind of vein, good movies are rare. I think finding really good horror movies, I'm sorry, Josh and Caleb, are it's going to be hard to find. You've got to really look. So VHS being good, I think a lot of people want to hold on to that. A lot of people want to hold on to something yeah. good that they found. And I really hope that 94 works out. Uh, if not, I don't want another viral. I mean, I remember seeing yeah, that. Exactly. Caleb and I made a whole, we made plans to watch that together. We went, I went to his house, we watched it and we were both like super pissed halfway through. We're like, is this, is this going to get better? We kind of both knew, no, it's not. Yeah. That's frustrating. You don't want that to repeat. Ugh, God, no. Well, it's been a pretty slow week. That's, that's all I got. Mostly news about movies we haven't seen. <laughs> well, good, good. Cause we got a lot of shit to talk about today. Uh, So before we talk Luca, I'd like to talk a bit about The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, the other big film from this past weekend. Uh, I needed context, so I rented The Hitman's Bodyguard, watched that. It's pretty funny. I liked it. Thought Ryan Reynolds and uh, Sam Jackson had great chemistry. Weird story. I thought for like constantly like none of this shit would ever happen, but it doesn't matter. Uh, It was weird seeing Gary Oldman as a Russian dictator yeah uh, like what happened to get like gary oldman needs another darkest hour he needs another mink he needs another gravitas performance because he is just stuck in paycheck hell right now <laughs> uh and then the hitman's wife's bodyguard i went to see that uh i found out my local theater is no longer blocking out every other seat. I found that out because an old couple sat right next to me in an empty theater. Yeah. Classic. Yeah. And I was like, I was here first. I'm I'm not going anywhere. And they were just this (laughs) old couple who didn't like, it felt like it was their first time out ever. Uh, (laughs) And 20 minutes into the movie, her phone rings and she doesn't, She's like digging through a tiny purse to get a hold of. I can see the phone from where I'm sitting. And she's just digging through. And I'm, I want to be like, lady, I'll get it. Just hurry up. She found it eventually, silenced it, and then just continued to like describe things in the movie to her husband. 
and I was so pissed. Uh, thankfully, the movie was hilarious enough that it distracted me from the epic shit show I found myself in. Um, it's really funny. Uh, gives a much larger role to Salma Hayek, which was really smart because she's hilarious. Uh, she, like Ryan Reynolds is kind of going through some PTSD after the first movie. He's been told, like, don't bodyguard anymore. And then he gets dragged into this shit. Uh, our villain is Antonio Banderas as a Greek. Okay. Uh, and then Morgan Freeman is in it as Ryan Reynolds' dad. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the bodyguard who taught him everything he knew. And I got to say, I heard nothing but bad things about this. I was laughing the entire time. It's a really funny comedy. If you're going in there looking for Citizen Kane, I don't know what the hell you're doing with your life. You're going there to laugh. It's a comedy. That's the whole point. So, yeah, it's crude. It's supposed to be crude. It's funny. So, I yeah, it's got my blessing. I give both those films an eight. Very enjoyable films. Good double feature. I'd be okay with a third movie. That's awesome. I love it. I, I, I haven't seen a lick of either of them, but I, I, I love your passion. <laughs> I'm so glad we've got Pixar on the back end of this, because otherwise, this is going to be such a bland episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've yeah. got fuck all to talk about so far yeah yeah i, I, I obviously know a lot uh i have you know opinions on those actors but man yeah i haven't seen either of those movies and i don't know if i i don't know if i ever will but i tr I, I trust you one day on a saturday when when you know brown and i have some time we'll watch we'll do a double feature well, I only watched them because, you know, the sequel came up on here and I'm like, well, I don't want to leave something hanging. So I, yeah. you know, I need to know. I need to know. Exactly. I need to know. <laughs> and now I know they're funny. I'm probably going to, you know, if I ever see these films on sale, I'll pick them up. I'm not paying full price, but I'll, I'll, I'll buy them on sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Luca. Disney Plus. Luca. Uh, Disney Plus for free. For subscribers, by the way, Pixar gets it. <laughs> they do. They understand, you know, people like us who uh, don't have money to spend, you know, uh, spend 20 bucks to go see a movie. So it's nice to already have the subscription because, hey, we want we, we watch Loki, you know, we watch those Marvel shows. And then these Pixar movies are have been really cool. Onward, Soul. It was really special, you know, like on Christmas Day. That was really, really cool of them to do that. And now this. And it kicked ass. Luca kicks ass. It's an awesome movie. And so I'm, I'm really grateful. All three of those are really memorable. And they're a part of a Disney Plus era. So that's really cool. I did read that apparently the Pixar employees are a little pissed that Disney did that. They think it's Disney disrespecting Pixar by saying, like, nobody's going to pay for these movies. Uh -huh. Which is I a mean, shit way to look at it not true yeah <laughs> like yeah. i mean those movies kick ass every time in the theater so yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna take this as a positive and think that this is pixar looking out for the little guy which i feel like they've always kind of done yeah oh so, yeah positive it's a positive thing um luca is the feature film debut of enrico casarosa who was nominated for an oscar for best short film for 2011's La Luna. Yes. <laughs> before, before Cars 2. One of the, one of the best shorts. Uh, one of my personal favorites of all the shorts that they've done. And every single one is, is just as good as the movies. You know, they're awesome. So that one's really, really cute. Uh, you, you like that one too? Yeah, I mean, we'll watch it from time to time. Yeah. yeah she really cool. likes all the colors and how bright it is. Mm-hmm. I just think the story is really cute. And then Luca, just, you can see, you know, you can see that, that touch in Luca. It's mm -hmm. such a gorgeous movie. Oh, it is remarkably gorgeous. It really captures the, the Italian coastal cities so, so well. The Riviera. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Um, let's talk a bit about the, the voice cast here. Uh, Jacob Tremblay plays Luca Pagoro, a curious young sea monster wants to explore another world. Tremblay is one of the most popular child actors working today, having appeared in such films as Room, Wonder, Good Boys, and Dr. Sleep. He's set to appear in the Toxic Avenger reboot, and he's going to voice Flounder in the Little Mermaid remake. So this kid is everywhere. 
<laughs> yeah, he he's awesome. He's he's incredible. Uh, I mean, in in, in Room 2015 with Brie Larson, going toe to toe with Brie Larson that whole movie. It's incredible. Uh, and then uh, like Good Boys. When did that movie thinking? No, oh, we'll see. We'll see. He's fucking hilarious in that movie. And it reminded me of, you know, like some of the like 2000s uh, comedies that I love so much, you know, and these kids were kind of playing off that. He's awesome. I thought he was, I, I, I'm super excited to see what he does. And I thought he was great in this. This is clearly his voice is going to change soon. And so this is kind of the last time he could probably do this. Uh, uh, yeah, re- really cool. Really cool for him to be able to showcase that talent uh, and, and be in a Pixar movie. What, what more could you want as a kid? Do you think that Tremblay is going to be one of those got one of those child actors who like doesn't quite make it to an adult career, or do you think he's going to have like a, you know, trying to think of a comparable, like a Kurt Russell kind of thing? Okay, so you're asking if it's going to be like a Haley Joe Osmond situation? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that could happen, or or yeah, or it could be like a um, like a yeah, Drew Barrymore. Be, like, There's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, we'll see the next like three or four years are are important to see, is he going to challenge himself or what's going to happen? Yeah. As he changes, he's going to look a lot different in a few years. Uh, I even think like Lucas Hedges, it took him a while or like Timothy Chalamet, it took them till after puberty and all of that to kind of come into their own. You know, we didn't really know who they were until they were like 17, 18. So yeah, we'll see. I think the kid's got skills. I think he's going to be somebody. Yeah. I think he is. I hope so, man. I hope so. I'm, I'm rooting for him. I'm also rooting for Jack Dylan Grazer. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> he plays oh, oh. Alberto Scorfano, Luca's best friend. Grazer yes. played young Eddie Kasprak in both It films, as well as Freddie Freeman in Shazam, a role he's reprising in a couple years in Shazam Fury of the Gods. Uh, yeah, he was great. Um, very distinct voice, this kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right away, I was looked at Brianna. I was like, "Fucking Eddie." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, that's Eddie's. I, Eddie's one of my favorite characters in that first. It, maybe my favorite of the kids. That's really difficult because I also I, I like I like all of them. I guess <laughs> it's not, that's really hard. But he, that actor is he's great. He's incredible, and I I I'm rooting for him just like Tremblay. Uh, yeah, he's a good um, kind of arrogant teenager. Uh, he he's good. I like him. I think his re- his redemption thing was a little, little rushed. I thought uh, he just kind of shows up. Yeah, 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 yeah. It definitely this yeah this movie has its has its plot points that are a little bit uh, like you said rushed and kind of. A little cheap at times, but his character is fantastic. I wonder what you thought was cheap. I thought that was cheap. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I I agree. I think that that was very rushed. His storyline felt super organic and mysterious, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, here I am at the nick of time, and you just you know you want you want a little bit of difference, a little bit of change. You know, exactly what I was expecting. Also. Yeah, me too. You don't want that to happen though. You don't want it to just be like, oh, another kids movie moment, and then the villain. Um, I think we'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's kind of cut. He's kind of taken from cars. It's, it's Chick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, Chick. exactly. Yeah, he he knew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's very similar. I thought he was hilarious, Chicho, yeah. <laughs> a best spot. But I, I, yeah, I was just kind of like, oh, that's very similar to something they've done before, and that's why I, you know. That's why, you know, Luke is not a movie that would be like in my top five, right? Because it's not quite as creative as some of the other ones that kind of go uh, uh, an extra. Well, I mean. But I still really liked it. <laughs> I think it is creative in a different way because if you notice a lot of Pixar films, they have the same like animation and like style, but this one was different. It was more vibrant. For sure. I like the use of like all the Italian culture in the movie, like throughout yes. it through and through. I feel like it's creative in a different way, but I see what you I, I mean agree. by missing some marks. Yeah, that's no, that's you're right. I think that creatively, that's probably the wrong way to look at. It. I, th- I just think the story storyline lacks a little bit of I- imagination at times. You're wanting a little bit more. Yeah, me. but 
the, the voice acting and the, yeah, the colors, the vibrancy is through the roof. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I, I like this movie. I, you, me too. I mean, right. yeah, it's a through and through eight. Yeah. Story-wise, it did to me feel like a hybrid of Cars and The Little Mermaid. You did say Little Mermaid as soon as I Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, mean, that, that, that was kind of on the nose, you know? That, yeah. And that's fine. That movie's third, over 30 years old, and I, would, I love that it got, got kind of revamped in a way. Plus, the parents in this one are awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the two best characters in the movie. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Emma Berman plays Julia Marcavaldo, the young girl who befriends Luca and Alberto, and this is her mm-hmm. first movie ever. I oh, saw, wow. I saw that. How about that? She's wonderful. She did great. Cool character. Really cool character. Yeah, she was cool. She was great. Um, Saverio Raimondo plays the villain Ercole Visconti, and this is also his first movie. <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> He's done some Italian TV, but this is his first major film production. Nice. Um, SNL alum Maya Rudolph voices Luca's mother, Daniela. Some of her uh, film appearances include Bridesmaids, Inherent Vice, Big Hero 6, Grown Ups, and Idiocracy, just to name a few. And earlier this year, uh, uh, one of my favorite movies of the year, Mitchell's vs. the Machines. Yes, she was. I forgot about she's the mom yeah. and she's the mom in that. She's the MVP of this year so far, Maya Rudolph. She <laughs> and, and is there anybody, if I'm making a, an animated movie, she's the first person I'm casting as the mom right away. She's the best. And she's great in Big Hero 6. I yeah. Love love her to death, man. <laughs> so do I. Uh, and then comedian Jim Gaffigan plays Luca's father, Lorenzo. Uh, Gaffigan is one of the most recognizable and beloved stand-up comics working today. Check out his many specials on Netflix and Prime Video. And I immediately, the second he opened his mouth, I'm like, that's, that's Gaffigan. <laughs> he's, he's got a voice, very recognizable voice. The mustache. Oh, my God. That was a work of art. That stash. <laughs> my God. Makes Sam Elliott tremble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was half his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God, I love how Pixar pulls off these crazy features, but I just, I just roll with it. It just works. Ah, so, so amazing. I love the mom and dad so much, and both underwater and above. My favorite thing of the movie is them constantly assaulting children trying to find their kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she just started kicking the soccer ball around and she's like a master at it. <laughs> it's so awesome. A bit with the kid with the ice cream cone when dad's just like, did you think we wouldn't recognize you? It just kicks him <laughs> into the water. <laughs> oh my God. I love it so much. Yeah. I, I love when they initially get in, get out and he's like, I got this. The dad. <laughs> and then he's like, "Never mind." <laughs> oh yeah. It, the dynamic between them two. And those are, those are just two people who understand comedy better, better than we can really, you know, even fathom what's going on. Their timing is so good. He, he really is, you know, like you said, one, one of the more well-known standout people. And Maya on SNL was one of the standouts while she was there, just always memorable characters. And I think them having them too was, was totally necessary in the movie Otherwise, you'd be um, around a bunch of very new talent. These people are established. And you, sometimes I think you need that in like a, a big kids movie because that for me was huge. I was like, holy shit, Maya and Gaffigan. <laughs> That's a big deal for me as a fan. One thing I thought was a little, little lazy, Julia's dad is identical to the dad in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Like Ooh, it's yeah. the exact same I, model. Yeah, I didn't see that, but yeah, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this film just I I liked it, but it it felt like somebody somewhere wasn't trying as hard as Pixar's done in the past. I don't know where the fault lies, but there's something about this film that's holding it back. Or yeah, and and where maybe wearing its influences on its sleeve like a bit, little too much. Maybe. That might be it. It 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 feels like a like someone kind of used a glue stick and slapped together a few movies to make this. Where I feel like Pixar usually is really creative in their original ideas. Yeah, yeah, like Onward and Soul. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a cynical bastard now, but I just, I've, I've wanted more. I think that's fair to, 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 to want more in the story, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was left to tears at the end when the two friends uh, separate. I was, which I pretty much cried every, every Pixar, Pixar movie, movie except like, for cars. And yeah, that's about it. Every other one. I'm, I'm pretty much at some point I'm crying, even good dinosaur even brave they all have those moments that pixar likes to sneak uh, in where it's just like it makes you want to feel something for a second yeah they just they know yeah, yeah they, they know, know how, how to, to just play sucker that punch well. me yeah <laughs> go in watching a kid's movie you leave crying yeah and i just i'm just a sucker for movies about identity you know uh, yeah and they do that a lot yeah it's always always what they're doing they're always trying to yeah. make you make you think about me and my family or me and my friends it or me and my feelings <laughs> I think every single one of their films is about finding your path in life. Like all yeah. of them. Toy yeah. Story to Luca, it's all that in some. Yeah. Terms. And, and it, like accept accepting that it's okay to just wherever you are is probably where you should be. You know, it's like like Woody is and toy the all four Toy Stories is. I mean, that's why they had to make a fourth one. Yeah, because it's, it's like he's constantly like, "What do I do next? What's next? What's happening tomorrow? I'm planning this stuff out and making sure all my." All the other toys are in line, yeah. and when that's taken from him, it's like, oh, like, and that happens to human beings, you know. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just going to happen to us inevitably. And Luca had that thing where it was like, man, when you meet somebody, and you connect right away, and you're just like, holy shit, we click. This is awesome. And then they move, and you're like, damn, that's tough. But you got to do what you got to do. Like, imagine Connor, if uh, you know, you and I just were living in totally different states. That would suck, you know. And that would have like hit me really hard if you did that, you know, a year into us being friends, that would be like, damn, that's tough. And I think that's what Luca like hit me the hardest was that that friendship thing when it's built and you don't know when it could go or where it could go is, is scary, but also it doesn't, it, you cannot back down from it. You know, you have to continue to let people in, you know? And I, I think Luca like figured that out. It was like, I gotta, I gotta do me, but it's cool that I, let this guy be my friend and teach me new things. Sure. But it also brings up that like friendship's not the end. Like no. you got to work. You got, if you really want to maintain, you know, like it, at the end, like, you know, Alberto got him into the school, but he's not going to just like never talk to him again. He's going to be making sure, you know, they're going to see each other from time to time. Yeah, that yeah. Friendship's going to be alive. And you really 100%. have to, if it's worth it to you, you got to put the time in. And yeah, I, I like that aspect of it. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool of knowing, like, yeah, even if you do move to a different state and move to a different country, we can we can still contact each other, and when we do see each other, pick it right back up. That's awesome. That's badass. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, that's exactly what Caleb and I have got going on right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Very much. You and Caleb have had to just kind of battle through. Uh, literal huge long distances of uh, we can't really hang out but we can email and talk about movies and just try to keep up that way and that's not easy but it's worth it you know oh. uh brianna what are some of the things you uh found in this film um i could see from alberto's perspective that you can tell that he's been through something in the beginning of the movie, you can tell that there's something that he's like holding on to that might be hurting him. And I like watching, I know it's about Luca, but I, I think I really liked his bit of the story that we did get to see because you could tell he went through something tragic and technically his own way of loss to eventually learning to trust and to mm. allow distance in these friendships that he's built, that he's cared for so much. And you can see that he's had his own personal growth alongside yep. Luca. Oh yeah, Alberto is a fantastic character, truly. Uh, one of the more memorable ones from the past few years to me. I don't think it's the most memorable movie, but this character, like what he just means, and like Brianna saying, that kind of like that stuff with his father. We don't we don't really get closure on that, and and Pixar, you know, they they mess with that sometimes, but there's other times where they patch it up real nice or whatever. Yeah. But Alberto, no, like he's just got to grow up on his own and it's fucking, <laughs> it's a, yeah, that was, that was really cool. His little hideout 
Yeah. You know, when they were, when they were building their own Vespa, fuck, that was cool. <laughs> that was so cool. Mm -hmm. I think I prefer him, like his storyline personally over Lucas. Like, I, yeah. I think that that was the one I was drawn to the most out of like the three of them, maybe. And then it was cool that like him and, um, uh, Julia's dad had that kind of yeah. like relationship. I thought that was pretty dope. You could tell uh, he wanted to take him under his wing. Yeah. Always Where's him Alberto? <laughs> <laughs> I liked that there was no messing around with the big reveal at the end when the sea monsters were revealed to the people. Dad, like her, her dad immediately steps up and is like, they won the race. Like they're my daughter's friends. That's what matters. Like, yeah. I liked so that a lot. And then everybody backed off, you know, because he's giant. Yeah. <laughs> I like those old ladies who like lowered their umbrellas and they were sea monsters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That was that was genius. They were thought... sprinkled in throughout the movie here and there too. Yeah. That was that was really smart, that little bit. And then the grandma was like, I come up on most weekends. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. That was I, I like that a lot how the sea monsters are actually kind of like, yeah. Yeah. It's nice to go up there for a cup of coffee every once in a while. <laughs> Was she was was she supposed to? Do we know which, uh, whose parent she is? Is is she the mom's mom or the dad's mom? Do we know that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I watched it again today, and I don't think I ever. You did? It. Yeah. Well, oh, you life. watched it twice. Yeah. Very <laughs> nice. I love that. Because I was yeah. wondering, like, if Grandma's so chill about the the surface, why does Mom have such a fear of it? Yeah. Why are the parents so uptight? I don't, is there a way like to find out whose parent she is? I don't know. Well, let's see. Uh, her name is probably, I don't know which. They never say her which name. Which voice either. that is. I mean, you'll judge by the last name too. If they don't have the same last name, then it must be uh, the mom's mom. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, here you go. Oh. Sandy Martin. Wait, is that? Who's that? Sandy Martin. So she's the dad's mom. Daniela's that's mother Ma and Luca's grandmother. There that's Matt's mom from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh my God. Danny, <laughs> let's fucking go. Born in wow. Philadelphia, 1949. Yes. <laughs> uh, I go up, I go up, I go up to the surface on most weekends. <laughs> oh man, that's that's perfect. Couldn't be any better. Yeah, no, this, yeah, I, I thought, I thought pretty much every character was, was good, even if uh, you, Connor, you brought up the cloudy, cloudy with a chance of meatballs and then the villain being very similar to cars. Uh, other than that, man, I, I don't really have any complaints. I, I thought, I think this movie is totally worth your time, you know, totally worth uh, watching. Just like pretty much every Pixar's, Pixar movie is worth your time. They are gorgeous, they're stunning movies. I just, I'm not a fan of the Cars trilogy. That's that's just me personally. I think I can sit through the first, maybe the second Cars movie only because they were coming out when I was still like a preteen around that area. My little brother was obsessed with them. So therefore mm. I had to watch them. So they're not like, I can see that they lack a little bit of luster compared to the other ones, but like they're not terrible. I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> I enjoy the first cars. I haven't seen two and three yet. Uh, I worked three at Draft House. I saw bits of it. Yeah. 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 Oh, didn't look special. <laughs> no. Nah. But the first one I, I enjoy. I think it's a cute movie. Uh, I see it as Paul Newman's swan song. So to me, it's it's got that going for it. Uh, yeah. I don't. I, I like cars. Um, cars two, I snuck out of in theaters to see bridesmaids instead <laughs> you know, i was i was 16 yeah <laughs> couldn't see r-rated movies yet so got a ticket to see cars 2 went down the hallway bang bridesmaids and had a ball because bridesmaids is still uh, hilarious 10 years later amazing movie i remember when i turned 17 and i was finally able to see r-rated movies without adult supervision uh caleb me and a mutual friend went on my on my birthday or around my birthday to see the devil inside remember that movie oh yeah <laughs> and we were all just like oh wait is that the 
like the really creepy old lady elevator scene? What are we doing? Or is it the diner scene I'm thinking of? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Dang. this 10 years ago. I feel like ago. I know exactly what you're talking about, and that might be the one. That one stuck with me for a little bit. It was a found footage film about, like, there was an old lady in a mental hospital who had carved yeah. upside down cross into her lip. Oh, and, I know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that one's even worse. It yeah. ended with, like, a cut to black and a website link. Like, if you want more, check out this website. And we were all like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm not going to your website. Fucking 2012. <laughs> Stupid. I don't care enough about this story to do homework. Fuck off. <laughs> so, yeah, we all went to like think like Applebee's or something and we're just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh. Oh, good times. <laughs> but yeah, um, Cars is decent. I like. Pretty much all the Pixar movies have something. Uh, there's a couple I don't care for simply because I didn't think they were very good movies. Uh, I've still got a couple more to see. I've got to watch Monsters University and The Good Dinosaur. Uh, and then the Cars sequels, I'll get there when I get there. Monsters University. Yeah. Gorgeous. Beautiful movie. Oh. The colors are, it's absurd. Like it's, I remember being just a tap on the senses, but I didn't like that story that much. And then Good Dinosaur. Tad forgettable. What? I think I prefer the good dinosaur over Monsters Universe. I think I do too, but I think it's a tad forgettable. Yeah, I mean, I can see, but I just feel like it's there's a lot. It also came out the same year as Inside Out, and just like, whoa. (laughs) I wonder why they did that. Yeah, tough stuff. Yeah, I think the A team worked on Inside Out, and the B team worked on Dinosaur. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Pete Doctor and and company were on Inside Out. Yeah, (laughs) that's. Are you guys gonna watch uh, Monsters at Work? I don't even know what that is. It's the Monsters, Inc. sequel series they're doing on Disney+. Plus. Oh, oh Christ. I, I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah, most likely. You know, it's fucking Disney+. Plus got, got us all by the balls. <laughs> John Goodman cool. and Billy Crystal are back, and it's just them harvesting Scream at Monsters, Inc. So, yeah, we'll watch that once a week, and Loki once a week, and then whatever. What's what's the next show after Loki? Um, they just keep what if? I think it goes right into Black... Like, that's, like, the next, like, Marvel production is Black Widow, I think. Yeah, the movie. But what's what's the thing? Next thing the they're series. gonna do. They don't like. I haven't heard anything. I'm fairly certain it's What If. Uh, Actually, I think Marvel. my dad. It might be. Marvel release calendar, 2021. So much. All right. So. Okay, that's. All right. What? Yeah, it's What If in. Um, Later this summer and then later this year, we also get Hawkeye and Miss Marvel. So, good God, oh, nice. yes, that's still just 2021. Then 2022, we get Moon Knight, She Hulk, and the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, TBA is Secret Invasion, Iron Heart, Armor Wars, and the Wakanda series. So, we're gonna be busy. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, I mean. The, the, there's so much, so much content. Yeah. But it's, but it's, it doesn't matter. You know, people are going to watch. It's there. You have the subscription. It's once a week. So you're not really over, you know, overwhelmed. They're yeah. timing it out just right to where you can go see the movie. All right. And then digest it and then go and then watch the series. It's incredible what they're doing. More than just once a week. I appreciate so much that it's one show at a time. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, exactly. And then, and then even they even know, all right, we're going to have this three week gap. And then we're going to have black widow come out during, during that three week gap. And so our fans can breathe and watch everything, you know, it's crazy because you don't really get to breathe. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's the best time to be a nerd. It really is. We get nothing but content nonstop. Nerd is everywhere. Yeah. Nerdy is in. Yeah. It's beautiful. I never thought in my life I'd ever see a secret invasion live action (laughs) TV show? Are you fucking kidding me? Like, I grew up with this shit. I grew up with like playing action figures with Spider Man and scrolls and shit. And then I had the comic books. Like, this was just an this was a dream of mine. And here we are here with <laughs> millions and billions of dollars being spent, making sure it looks just right. <laughs> Wonderful. Ah, good t- good stuff. Um, <laughs> 
Luca has an IMDb score of 7.6, Rotten Tomatoes score of 89%. It's a Disney Plus exclusive, so that's where you can watch it without having to shell out 30 bucks because Pixar fucking gets it. I, yeah. I, <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to bitch about that forever. 30 bucks is, is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. If you're already paying for a subscription on top of that, it's ridiculous. Exactly. Ugh. Terrible. So, Let's talk some highlights of Luca. Uh, we've already kind of touched on some stuff. Um, yeah. It's it's a good movie. It's funny as hell. Uh, the parents and, like, all the pasta. It's incredibly Italian. Uh, Uncle, Uncle Ugo? <laughs> Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen? That was so creepy. <laughs> I realized you didn't see the end credit scene with his character. Oh, no, I didn't. No. No. What what happened? Did you see it as well? I didn't. I didn't see that either. No, I didn't know there was one. Okay, so I was watching what? with Willow, and I have this habit of letting the credits play with the music. And she's like vibing to, and she was. And so I'm in the bathroom. I can hear the music, like just like cleaning, and then I hear like his voice. I'm like, what? We didn't watch this last night. I run out, and it's him at the bottom of the ocean, blabbing on about well carcass and how I can talk for like, hours and hours and hours, and it doesn't bother me one bit. And he's like preaching to someone, obviously. And it, Clearly, from his point of view, you think it's Luca. And he's just going on and on and on. He turns around. He's like, all right, any questions? And it's one of the little, um, the sheep guppy fish or oh, whatever. Oh, Giuseppe. Yeah, Giuseppe. Giuseppe. <laughs> and he's just sitting there like, uh, and you can tell like by his like, shifty eye, he's like, uh, why am I here? <laughs> and it just cuts off. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cute. I was yeah. hoping for a little Nemo cameo or something, but then um, I saw in the movie that the, they're eating fish and fish aren't really sentient here. So yeah. maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, definitely don't want clownfish. Well, and um, Italy, you know, and uh, they're going to Australia over in Finding Nemo. So I wonder, I wonder if there was, if there was ever, ever an inner, you know, intertwined. I would have loved like Gil and the aquarium guys who are still in the bags, like just push their way to Italy. <laughs> yes, that would be wonderful. Oh, man. And, and, um, you know, John Negroni, God bless him. He's a writer. He made the Pixar theory and has a whole book about it. Yeah. I can't wait to see what he, how he adds this. the newest movies onward, Soul and Luca into that. Cause uh, he always does, you know, kind of adjust it. So I'm, I'm excited to see how this sea monsters come into play. <laughs> Not just sea monsters, but sea monsters that can easily pass for human beings. So like, yeah. Yeah. how I many can... characters in the Pixar world are actually sea monsters? Yeah, you could. You... Yep, you could definitely say that. That's true. I noticed you guys were pointing out like influences, like you said, Little Mermaid and all the other ones. But have you noticed like throughout the whole movie, like including like the cute little animated in credits, it also seemed like it had like a um, like a studio. Is it Studio Ghibli or Ghibli? Yeah, yeah. It felt oh, yeah. like because like of all like the head, like they stuck to like the culture, but also like the cute little animated where like they're showing you updates to the pictures, and you can see that he's with um julia's mom yes i thought i yeah. immediately was like oh that seems familiar but like in a cool way agreed yeah i can see that yeah i can really see that that's a good shout out uh how can you when, not be influenced by that crazy catalog you know <laughs> i've i've barely tapped into all that i've, I've seen two of them uh, it'll blow your mind man once you watch those and you see how oh yeah they, they were there first for a lot of these kind of stories. <laughs> well, the name of the town is Porto Rosso, which is named after Porco Rosso, the Japanese movie. Yes. Yeah. 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 So there you go. The yeah. cup and the Porto Rosso cup. Yeah. The piston cup. You piston <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I love that there is that the, the triathlon is swimming biking and pasta yes <laughs> perfect and no wonder she throws up every time she has to bike up a hill after eating a bowl of pasta just saying that i was like i finally understand why she keeps puking yeah <laughs> that was fantastic one thing i did i did notice and i owe this entirely to you austin because you forced me to walk my way like through fellini yeah, is, yeah. this is loaded with Fellini references and yes. just very much, particularly La Strada, which is the one we went uh -huh. after. So, like, I, yeah, 
it all comes back around, doesn't it? It's great. Yeah, yeah. I swear, I swear. Maybe I'm wrong, but I swear at one point they show someone watching TV and eight and a half is on. I swear. I believe that. I would believe that. I was like, oh my God, I'm pretty sure. That- <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. You can't, yeah, you can't, can't help it. You know, I also just got like, call me by your name vibes, like modern, okay, yeah. modern, um, modern foreign movies, but that are really told from like a Western perspective, you know, that are really told from like a more English speaking perspective. Uh, and Luca does a good job of never really making you feel like you're watching something just, just cheap. Like it's just this kind of like, it feels true to the culture. And I, I, I kind of like that. I, I maybe, maybe Italians feel differently, but, but I, I felt like this movie was, did a decent job of, you know, it is an English speaking movie, but they do a good job of showing yeah. a pretty, pretty cool part of the country. I do want to say that there was a review of this film that called it Calamari by your name. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cute. Uh, (laughs) and the other thing it bugged me at first that the two leads weren't italian but then i realized do sea monsters even have nationalities so yeah i I got over that pretty quickly (laughs) same thought process went through my head i was like it's sea monsters let's relax (laughs) yeah yeah that's, that's I can just be so hard on. It's like it's a kids movie. That Maybe too. the sea monsters are from Florida and they moved to the Italian coast. That could be possible. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The way they're talking versus yeah, how the people in the actual town are talking is is different. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, overall, it's cute. Um, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd put this in Pixar's best, but it is cute. Uh, I would watch it again. Yeah. Probably like, probably find more things to like about it. I definitely did when I watched it again. I think it was cool just because I was like, I wonder if this movie's going to pass the Willow test. And she sat there with her mouth gaped open the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. And you could tell she was like amazed by all the colors. And she was, I didn't hear a peep out of her. And I was <laughs> like, this is cool. The Willow test. Yeah. It's an hour and 40 minutes, you know? And so you. It had her attention. It had mine again, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very distracting movie by just the just the, the water. The it's, ending oof. scene alone, like when he finally comes out of the tunnel and it's raining and he turns. I was like, that's pretty, I like that. Pretty dope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I don't know if it's just the pessimist in me, but when he was going off to school, I was just thinking like they're gonna murder him on day one. I the same thought went through my head. I was like, "Oh my god, this is like an actual, like realistic thing. He might not be widely accepted." Or, yeah. uh, or, or you could just scare the shit out of some kids. Just that fucking turn into a sea monster. What? I gotta say, like Austin, if I found out you were a sea monster, like I'm gonna need a few days. <laughs> That's totally fair. That's totally fair. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold hold out on that. I'd be like, "Dude, I'm a sea monster. I would tell you. <laughs> I would tell you straight away. You want to be my friend?" <laughs> I'm a fucking sea monster. <laughs> who says no to that? Yeah. Like, who doesn't want to be a sea monster's friend? Yeah, to have a sea monster in your corner, just a part of your squad at all times. <laughs> I can call on my sea monster buddy to take care of take care of anything under the water. Oh my God. Yeah. I know for sure I will never drown. Like, yeah. I can yeah. go as deep in the ocean as I want. I'm going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> a sea monster will, will find me. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> um, what is Pixar? Do you guys know what Pixar's got coming next? Because this has been kind of like the next movie for so long. I don't really know what's what's coming after. Luca. Yeah. yeah, I already looked it up. Yeah. Uh, Turning Red, uh, directed by Domi Shi. It's a Chinese born Canadian woman. So that's fucking awesome. And then Lightyear, you know, bu- uh, buzz. So Lightyear. I forgot about Lightyear. That's March of next year and then June of next year. So looks like looks like a couple good movies on the horizon. Turning red. May Lee is a confident, dorky 13-year-old torn between staying her mother's dutiful daughter and the chaos of adolescence. And as if changes to her interest, relationships, and body weren't enough, whenever she gets too excited, she poofs into a giant red panda. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> it sounds just like brave. 
Yeah, that's very true. Oh. Just like the, the bear, yeah. Oh my god. And then Lightyear, I mean, who's it's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> Can't say no to that. Yeah. Isn't Chris Evans the voice? I yeah. believe I thought he was doing the isn't there a TV show? Who's doing that? There's a, there's a light year show as well. I, yeah, I believe there's a buzz like no, yeah, I think yeah. it's just a movie. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a buzz show as well uh, coming. That's what um, I feel like I've heard. Oh, oh, okay, here we go. The film is a spin off of Toy Story set within the narrative of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, that show that aired like back in the early 2000s. Okay, there you Patrick go. Warburton was Buzz Lightyear. Yes, that show was hilarious. <laughs> and I do believe Chris Evans is replacing Tim Allen because uh, of his political. Uh, leanings oh. yeah 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 i mean tim allen has made so much money with disney toy story santa claus and you're just going to toss that because you can't keep your mouth shut <laughs> <laughs> these people so many careers lost when you can just shut your mouth and keep going <laughs> fucking home improvement god damn it isn't he, isn't he like another sitcom on abc that's like kind of the same thing as home improvement oh, last no. man standing oh uh, Does he have like two daughters who are kind of like left leaning, and he's obviously not, or something like that? Like, I think it's like he's got all like he's got daughters and granddaughters, but then there's like one grandson who he bonds with because men can't bond with women apparently. <laughs> and <laughs> I, it's the most conservative shit I've ever heard of. It is my mom like put it on for a little bit, and I was like, "What is this?" It's like this doesn't make any sense to me. God, I would, <laughs> I just I end it again. Like it got canceled. Like yeah. two years ago, and then Fox bought it, I think, and now it's yeah. ending again. It's just not Network TV. Man. <laughs> Jeez. He's still, I know he's kind of a shit, but he is still my favorite, like, live action Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he's my favorite voice for Buzz or something. <laughs> oh, that too. Like easily, but yeah. I haven't heard Chris Evans do it yet. So maybe he's got, maybe he brings something new to the table. He will. He will. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to add to uh, Luca? I know we didn't really talk much about the bad guy, but uh, I mean, yeah, he's, it, it's, you know, he's like, oh, I run the town. And how old is he? 16, he says. He's not, though. So oh, yeah. They're like, that's what you said last year. He's yeah. like, it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that dude's like late 20s at least yeah and that's being generous and he's like two like child minions i don't know i, th- I yeah i don't know he he, he, like he, he was dastardly from wacky races you remember that <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> cool. yeah he, he's he's not a very original uh villain but he had some funny lines in the way, he, yeah, his little henchman. Get me my harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was funny. Uh, but Alberto and Luca and Julia are, are like far superior characters and specifically Alberto. Yeah. I, this movie kind of implies that like sea monsters don't have schools. Like he would have had to yeah. go to human school. Like, is there no culture down there? Is it just monsters just kind of? Riding it out and hurting fish. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, they're just losing their population because they all want to go up and go to school and eat ice cream and you know be in the be in the race for the Vespa. <laughs> that movie I gotta say, the Vespa race was was too much of the movie. Like, yeah, it, it treated it like it was Hildalgo or something. It's like, yeah, like, but Jesus. like you just point out that he they didn't have school down there, so maybe like he doesn't have like a wide range of like that's true, that's true. I don't know, like dreams or priorities, and he's like a Vespa, that's it. Yeah, he latches on to this one thing, yeah, because down down under where sea monsters live is just I guess just boring. I don't know. Well, Burton. Alberta thought the stars were fish, so he, they're not exactly getting the best education, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anchovies. <laughs> that was that was pretty great. I love when Julie found out she's like sleeping under the fish. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she took it extremely well. Yeah. Like I feel like this is not her first friend who turned out to be a sea monster. Like she get it was a vibe of like again. <laughs> you know? Damn it! Every cool guy is from <laughs> is a fucking sea monster. 
Oh, man. I, yeah, I like it, man. It's an eight for me. Yeah. Eight for me as well. Nine? Nine. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. All right. <laughs> Nine. I like it. You've seen it twice. So, you know, you've seen it more than both of us. And I'm probably going to have to watch it again, too, because now that my mom is sitting with Will, she's like, I got to get into these movies. I'm like, you're going to like Luca. So next mm-hmm. time she's, she's probably going to watch it. It's cute. It's cute for sure. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think, you know, it's not as deep as Pixar's other stuff, but that's okay sometimes. You know, sometimes we just, need, maybe we don't need to have an emotional roller coaster. We can just watch a fish try to win a best. Yeah. I was almost hearing that because I was like, it's always like a really tragic, sad part. I was like, when's it coming? And I guess it would have been like Alberto's storyline a little bit. So I'm kind of glad they didn't deep dive into that because I could have went. Yeah, yeah. A lot of places. It really could have, yeah. I oh, think, man. like, do any other Pixar movies just not have that? Like, I think Incredibles 2 does not have that. Yeah. I think neither of the Incredibles do, but I mean, some would say that scene when he's finding out that all his friends are dead will technically yeah. be the scene. First, so that, uh, first Incredibles yeah. is on a different different level. I, that movie's crazy dark. Yeah, but the second one, there's really nothing. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. I, uh, are all the Cars movies like that? I feel, mm, I feel like there's no major tragedy in the Cars movies. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, unless you count um, Doc. And his storyline, but I don't think that's that bad. Yeah, to what it could have been. Yeah, well, and, and the last one we got for, from Luca is is just the deepest of all of them. Soul is just so. I still cannot watch Soul because <laughs> it's that deep. Like I don't want to feel this right now. I can't do it. That movie is anxiety ridden. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I watched one for the first time uh, yesterday that wrecked me so hard emotionally i don't know if i can ever watch it again i mean it, it was I, i'm my lawyer has advised me not to make that comment <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait i can't wait i think i have a guess of what it is but i'll, I'll leave it there <laughs> i'm curious <laughs> so before we close out we have uh, assembled our personal top five pixar movies uh just to kind of get a glimpse of like where we all kind of stand with Pixar. Uh, how do you want to do this? Um, uh, Brianna, you want to start us off or do you want me to? We'll let Connor finish us off. Okay. Um, I, I, there's going to be probably, I mean, there's 24 movies now, uh, you know, five each. There's probably gonna be some kind of overlap. Probably. You know, that's just the way it's going to be. So if that happens, do you want to call it out? Like say, Hey, I have that as well. <clears throat> we'll we'll say we have it, but we won't say where we have it. Exactly where. Okay, and if you have it in the same place, that's okay because then we can we'll be in the same round. But yeah, you, you want to start with me? You start. I want to see the order you go in. Okay. I, well, I'm starting from okay. from five for sure. Uh, okay. Huh. Top five Pixar. This is tough, right? This, this is uh, all of us. Us three were all born in 1995, the year that you know Pixar started their their run. Uh, but my first movie would come from 2001, be their, their fourth film, Monsters, Inc. Uh, epic, epic movie. And a, a movie that has, you know, at six years old, rocked, rocked my world. I had, you know, Sully and Mike Lazowski and Randall, you know, uh, figures and stuff and stuffed animals and shit like that. And then as I got older, I, I became, you know, a big John Goodman fan, big Steve Buscemi fan. And this movie has just gotten better in my eyes. Uh, a brutal storyline that has has a nice little bit of hope at the end, you know, with with Boo and Sully. Uh, I love this movie to death. Um, and it, it, Monsters University was a, was a letdown, you know, in, in regards to Twelve Years Later. They just did not fulfill, you know, to me. It, you know, it just doesn't even hold a candle to Monsters Inc. Monsters University is somewhere in my back, you know five or six least favorite movies of the whole 24 monsters inc definitely has a place for me in the top five very nice very nice uh all right you're up brianna uh, my fifth would be toy story four and i know um, people might not like that 
it's not just Toy Story, but I like how it ended the the franchise right there. And I like how it seemed like, like you guys talked about earlier, Woody was always looking for his purpose. And it seemed like he was never like satisfied or like he always felt like he had somewhere else he had to be. I feel like this wraps it up and you can see that he finally is like, my purpose is here with Bo. Hmm. And it ends off nicely for me. I felt like I was reliving my childhood in the theater with you, Adam and Kayla. And I was like, this yeah. is nice. Yeah. I was like, they're not, they're doing, they're, they're definitely like living up to like my expectations with that movie. And so it's in my top five. Beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. I've got no, all four of the Toy Story films are fucking gold. Like there's no weak link there. So yeah, good choice. Excellent. What do you got at five, Connor? My number five was also Monsters, Inc. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I find myself whistling that tune absentmindedly. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a fun movie, uh, very creative in creature design, uh, especially early on in Pixar. Mm-hmm. The fourth film, yeah. we were able to do something that revolutionary that's hilarious, super sad, you know, tackles, you know, a, a, like broken friendships, fatherhood, like really tackles a lot of big themes. And also, yeah. like, you know, glo- like citywide conspiracy, which I found yeah. very fascinating. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, all that stuff is so fascinating, you know, uh, that world that they created with these, these monsters on the other side of the door. Just so fucking cool. <laughs> well, these, so, like, you know, the, the guy who, uh, with George, who keeps getting the toys on him and gets, like, attacked <laughs> by the, the kid agency. for <laughs> <laughs> there's so many great running gags i love the abominable snowman like john ratzenberger it's a little yeah, yes <laughs> pixar legend john ratzenberger yeah who wasn't in luca by the way this was his first time not being in a pixar um, again because i think he's a he's got conservative leanings yeah yeah <sighs> gotta cut him out <laughs> sorry we'll always, buddy. we'll always have ham yeah yeah i mean come on Howdy, howdy, howdy. <laughs> They're making fun of Woody is some of the best stuff. <laughs> I hate to break up a staff meeting, but they're here. That's my favorite <laughs> bit from the first. Yeah, Monsters, Inc., uh, great triumph from them and um, a fun movie that if Shrek had not been there would have definitely taken the best animated feature. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Neutron had no chance. Come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> So Monsters, Inc., Monsters, Inc., and Toy Story 4. Okay. All right. So Connor and I, neither of us have Toy Story 4 on our list. Nope. And Brianna, you do not have Monsters, Inc. No. Is it, is it, you, you, I mean, I feel I, like you really like it though, right? I do. I have like, like nostalgic feels for it because I grew up watching it and I had like the, oh yeah. Was it VHS or was it DVD? I feel like it was. Could have been VHS or DVD. I feel yeah. like it was in that time. I probably yeah. had the DVD. For sure. I definitely remember watching it like religiously, but there was just so many other ones that I feel like I see differently now that I'm watching them as an adult. Yeah. But I'm like, these are just a little bit more up there. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. I think Monsters, Inc. It's it's best thing. Most, uh, the thing that's aged the best is is the soundtrack. Yeah. Is that that just kind of jazzy tone that it has. Uh, Super, super unique. I love it. Randy uh, Newman is the unsung yeah. hero of Pixar. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, hundred <laughs> uh, percent. My number four uh, would not have been here, you know, like a few years ago. But since becoming a dad, definitely has kind of kind of changed my viewing of it. Uh, that'd be 2003's Finding Nemo. Ah. Um, this movie is very dear to my heart. I was a big fan of it as a kid. But I think there was a time where I just didn't really want to go near it. I think it messed with things and, and thoughts that I didn't really want to go near in my teenage years. And then as, as I became an you know, adult and then meeting Brown and then us having Willow, uh, Marlon is one of the best movie dads of all time, <laughs> straight up. And I think Finding Nemo has, as far as cold openings, probably the darkest of all the movies. Uh, oh, yeah. There's... There's like just death right away uh, with with babies, you know, and 
just just Nemo living. Uh, yeah, it's it's a tough one to to kind of deal with, like grapple with. But once you do, like once you kind of get over that, then I mean, Ellen playing Dory, that yeah. character is. There's so much depth to that to that character. I'm not a huge Finding Dory fan, but I do love that character, and I love I love Finding Nemo. Uh, Gil Willem Dafoe uh, performances Gil. That's one of my favorite characters in Pixar for sure. Uh, all that stuff in the tank, you know, shark bait, hoo ha, all that, all that stuff is amazing. And then Marlin and Dory, that journey across the ocean is just, just incredible. And a movie that came out 18 years ago, but looks just as good as Luca to me. Uh, it has, it has a, such a crisp look to it. And it, when they're inside of the whale, like, man, you know, that shit, that shit just takes me away. I really, really respect Finding Nemo and it's risen up the rankings for me as I get older. Uh, and I anticipate it could even go higher. You know, I just love it. Every time I watch it with Willow, I'm, I'm pretty shattered by it. And it, yeah, it's, it's ultimately about a dad just doing anything, anything he can to get back to his child. And then Dory, this person who has short-term memory loss, trying to find herself like how if that was if that was two humans you know if that was you know two random actors right now i would want to see that no matter what you know and then you put them underwater as fish fucking cool <laughs> I, I love finding Nemo. yeah absolutely uh it barely missed my top five yeah. i i had to make some some last minute changes after <laughs> yesterday <laughs> so did we so did we <laughs> Your number four, Brianna? Number four is also Finding Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up watching it. Um, we used to do a lot of road trips when we were younger. And my mom got this portable DVD player that all you had to do was like put it in like a little car charger port or whatever. Mm. And we were set. And so that was Beautiful. the movie we watched religiously on the car trips. And my mom would be able to hear it because sometimes she would just turn on the radio so she could hear us laughing at it or hear us watching it she'd comment or she'd laugh on some of the like Dory's lines and so I have nostalgic ties to that but I also started to love it more watching Willow and Austin watch it together and I was like now this has another kind of like familiar like warm feeling attached to it as well and so I was like I can't not have it in my top five yeah same yeah just can't deny it <laughs> <laughs> it ages well very well very well yeah it's it's awesome and what a run, you know, that they, th those first five movies, and then you go into, there's, there's, it just gets better and better uh, mm -hmm. as, as time goes. And I think there's a little bit of a lull, but they pick it right back up uh, in the 2000s. And I, I, I love this, man. This is a lot of fun. So you, Finding Nemo is like your six or seven, Connor? Roughly, yeah. It's a great movie. Um, I totally get why you guys would be attached to that one. It is a very touching film that's just get, that just gets better. Uh, yeah, wonderful. Beautiful. What's your number four? My number four is a film that I wasn't expecting to be uh, all that touching, but the way it dealt with uh, fatherhood and like how we value family in a fantasy setting really touched me. And uh, my number four is Onward. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Uh, this was the last newly released film I saw at the movies before COVID shut down all the theaters mm. uh, back in March of 2020. And there was nobody there. And I was like talking to the server and he was just like, yeah, like we're not doing too hot. And then like a week later, everything went to hell. But this film was so hilarious and beautiful and really got me <laughs> on an emotional level because you know I've had my own issues with my dad in the past and it uh movies that deal with that always get me right in the fucking heart for obvious reasons it's yeah. one of my it's one of my weak you know one of my weaknesses and this was a film that really did a good job showing uh how we can kind of choose our family we can choose mm. who fits those roles and who's important to us. And I was so happy Pixar took that angle with it. And as much as I love soul 
Onward was the Pixar hit, the 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 masterpiece of 2020, as far as I'm concerned. That should have won Best Animated Film. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll say it right here. I love Soul, but Onward got to me. And when you when a movie can get to me, that's that's a special it's a special movie. I'm not forgetting mm-hmm. that movie. And also the scene where Chris Pratt's character has to sacrifice Guinevere the van and like the emotional music starts playing and the, the tire blows out and the fucker starts galloping up the mountain. I die laughing every time. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I knew that was going to come up on yours. And yeah, I remember just your reaction to it was, was pretty special to witness. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, you've, you've said that all, you said that for the past year that, or, well, or since December, since Soul came out, you said, no, Onward's the better movie. And I love that. You've stood by that for months now. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's right there. Yeah, I knew it was going to be here. I was whether it was going to be four, three, two, or one. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I needed it there. It's, it's so good. And nobody's Is talking the- about it anymore. Ever since Soul came out, no one's talking about Onward anymore. I know. <laughs> and I got to keep this movie's memory alive. Keep keep the train rolling. Isn't it cool that we can have a movie so recent in our top five Pixar when these are kids' movies? Isn't that cool? These these are kids' movies, but I feel like, you know, they they're belong people. to everybody. Yeah, they're people's movies, yeah. Yeah, and there's references in these movies that kids would go way past, you know, children. But we are like kids, but they're not kids' movies. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's for for sure, hundred percent. I like this. Well, I I don't have Onward in mind, uh, although I do love that movie. I I mean, I'm actually shocked you don't. Yeah, well, I I yeah, I I don't know. I feel like these movies uh, I have 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 had have had a life, you know, have really been been in my life for a while, Uh, which leads me to my number three. (laughs) <laughs> uh this would be <clears throat> uh, the early days you know when they were just doing toy story and then uh, bugs life that's that's my number three bugs life has probably their best villain of of all, all the movies which kevin spacey has hopper uh basically hitler um uh <laughs> very 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 scary yeah I, th- I think this is i think this i think this plot is pretty uh you know we've seen it a thousand times a million times even the plot of a bugs life where it's these you know, people who think they're superior, this race who thinks they're superior and they're going to try to control the weaker, you know, weaker race or whatever they believe in their heads. And Hopper's just like, I want to crush them. They're ants. They're smaller than us. We're more powerful. I just want power. It's, it's like that simple, A Bug's Life. It really is that simple, but it's so fucking awesome. And the characters are great. The voice, the voice cast is incredible. And it still looks so unique because they're dealing with bugs. And when the rain falls, and the drops are giant from their perspective, it looks so fucking cool, you know? Every, everything is from a much different perspective in A Bug's Life. And that, I mean, when Kevin Spacey, you know, he's like, did that hurt? You know, when he throws the one, one, you know, one pebble, and then boom, just kills that guy. He just kills this other grasshopper in the middle of a meeting just to prove a point. You know, Pixar, that. That's what, as I got older, I was like, that's when they decided they're going to like really fuck with stuff. I think, I think in that one. And I think the Jesse stuff in Toy Story 2 is really like, whoa, this is dark. I think they're like, we're going to go there. We're going to fucking go there, you know? And that's how we're going to do it from now on. And then in Monsters Inc. and Finding Nemo and so on and so forth, it just gets wild. (laughs) And I think, I think A Bug's Life is a big, a decision they made early on these movies are not going to be just for kids. If you're paying attention, you're going to be rewarded by these really like well done characters, really well written characters. And uh, I, I, I love this one. I can watch it any day of the week. It's also got uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus with an awesome performance. One of my favorite, favorite characters of the all Pixar as well. So yeah, I love this one. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely kind of biased towards it because it was the one that I loved as a kid, Yeah, but it, it still has stood the test of time and Hopper gets better and better as I watch it. Right on, man. That's great. Bugs Life's another one that barely missed my list. That's, that was a very, that's been a favorite film of mine since I was a kid as well. Uh, It's just, there's others that got me a little bit harder. So yeah. 
good good pick. Totally understandable. Yeah. Brianna, number three for you. My number three is up. Up. Ah. I love the old man, love Randall, but I also love the story he had with his wife. And mm. every time I hear the song Married Life, I keep thinking of the movie instantly. And with the age of TikTok, you know, that's all over the place now. <laughs> so every time I hear it, I think of up. And I also just like watching it for the first time as an adult again, like with you and seeing how you reacted to it. And I was like, I like this even more now. And yeah. I can't think like that whole scene where you see them like build up their life together. That that yeah. was a I love up. That stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> up is so good. Definitely barely missed the cut for me. Barely. Definitely like six, five, six, or seven. Oh man. Yeah. <clears throat> Easily to me, they're I called Finding Nemo kind of the darkest intro, but I think up is probably their strongest. Yeah. Where it just, whoa, it takes you to a different realm. Could be a short. It could be a short. That, yeah, that bit alone. Jeez. Sheesh. Uh, yeah. I love when It's Always Sunny does that bit where they kind of, you know, kind of make fun of it. You remember that episode? The gang saves the day. And they all picture their, like, lives happening afterwards. Oh. And Charlie's is an animal. Charlie and the waitress. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a bunch of little kids. who Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> They're all <Yeah>. janitors. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of my favorite episodes. Right, the boys are janitors and the girls are waitresses. Yeah, I think it's, oh, season 10, I think. But yeah, it's called The Gang Saves the Day, and they're in that gas station. And Frank's like, I just want to get a a hot dog or whatever. He's just trying to get these, the Franks. (laughs) (laughs) Love it so much. (laughs) That's, yeah, that's fantastic. Up, I... I love I love that film. The opening is so sad; it's hard to get through. Yeah, um, yeah. I can't even listen to Married Life. I love Michael Giacchino's <laughs> score, but I can't listen to it. It it makes me too sad. Um, and then for me, Up kind of loses me with with the bird and all that. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I just really like Randall. I feel like he just keeps it all going. And the dog squirrel. When he finally yeah. gets a hold of the dog. Uh, yeah, it's got its and moments for sure. It's a it's a good movie. Uh, didn't quite make my list. Yeah, yeah, same here. Barely, barely missed the cut. Uh, my number three, however, is um, a uh, one we've already talked about on uh, one of our other podcasts. Uh, it's the Incredibles. Yeah. Yeah. 2004, <laughs> baby. <laughs> uh, one of the smartest, most original superhero movies ever made. Dark mm. as hell. I mean, the body count in that movie is pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Syndrome as a villain is a mass murderer of superheroes. I mean, Jesus. <laughs> I wasn't ready to deal with that as a child. Uh, but that movie's hilarious. It deals with, you know, the family dynamic. Uh, I love the idea of superheroes getting sued out of existence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's it's a smart, funny thriller, almost. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it's their most grown-up movie. Like, it's a movie that, re- like, you could turn it into a live-action PG-13 superhero movie, and it would still sell. Like, easily. Yeah. 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 It's, I think it's the best Fantastic Four movie ever made. <laughs> yeah there you go damn straight i love the setting the setting of you know like the 50s and their house is really cool looking you know the, the kind of yeah. the furniture it, it, it's i love all that stuff uh the the touch in the incredibles is is on a different level i like the incredibles but it blows my mind how much stuff went over my head when yeah. i was watching it as a kid like for one that scene where like he's finding out all his super yeah. friends are dead, that went over my head completely as a kid. I'm just sitting there like, oh, that seems like it's bad, but I can't and, put my finger. And then those the giant, line. those giant like black things yeah. are flying at him, and yeah. he's boom, 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 like, dude, that shit is mm-hmm. fucking gnarly. <laughs> I was watching it with the girl I nanny, and she was like, whoa, because I told her I was like, this is the '50s, like it's set like in the '50s or '60s. She's like, what? And I was like, look at all the cars around, look yeah. at everything. And she's like, oh my god. And I was like, yeah. Same thing happened to me when I was your age. I'm not going to lie. It took like up to my 20s 
before I realized that that movie took place in the 60s. Yeah. 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 So cool. And then, like, you've got the villain, you know, literally getting sucked into a jet turbine and oh, getting just greased to death. Yeah. <laughs> There's moments where I'm like, this is a kid's movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> Holy like hell, it. It's, it goes hard. Yeah, oh. <laughs> He's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. <laughs> With his little tricycle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Movies, movies great. That that is my number six, Connor. That is the one that's right outside my top five. That on another day might be number five. Uh I, I the Incredibles is so good. We got to do an Oscar Sunday. I think we both I think we both gave it a nine. Yeah. Yeah. And and we just couldn't stop talking about this, how good the screenplay is. It's it's so well written. <laughs> and and uh Samuel Jackson, one of his best performances ever. Frozone. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a it's a very smart movie. Yeah. I mean, and I think yeah. the Pixar movie that has more of the most appeal to adults. <clears throat> like for sure. Yeah, 100%. Love that. So that's your number 3. Yeah. That is not on mine, Brianna. That's not on yours either. No. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty here. <laughs> Uh, we got you got two left each. Um, my my number two is is this is the most recent one on my list. So I have two thousand one, two thousand three, nineteen ninety eight is Bugs Life, right? Yes. Or, yeah. Uh, this would be two thousand fifteen. Inside Out. <laughs> uh, wow. This is this is just one of my straight up favorite movies of the past decade. Inside Out is. You know, there's there's nothing really to be said about how yeah the depth of it is is amazing of course, but Inside Out um, I I remember exactly where I was uh, when I saw it in theaters and I remember the rest of the day was consumed with just kind of hmm, hmm. you know just kind of in my head I was just kind of in my head the rest of the day and that that only happens with me with movies you know I, I'll I'll think about a movie forever. But when I just can't even talk, you know, I can't even, there's nothing that I can even say. I remember when I saw The Master in theater, so I was 17, I was just kind of like, what, what? What did I just, what just happened? I like when that happens. I like when a movie takes me over like a wave, whether it's bad or good. I love when that happens. And Inside Out did that. Uh, and then I've, you know, since been able to see it a bunch. And then uh, last year during, you know, quarantine, Brianna and I went and saw it. Uh, on, on the out on an outdoor screen in New Braunfels. Uh, and that was really, really cool. You know, it just kind of reminded me, oh my gosh, I really like this movie. <laughs> and it it hits some stuff that I think other Pixar movies are trying to, or it's beating kind of beating around the bush, but inside out just goes kind of straight to it. And my favorite character in all of anything that's happened in Pixar and my favorite voice vocal performances is Richard Kind as Bing Bong. Oh, uh, it's, and it's... and I I I love that Inside Out actually goes there and actually sacrifices that character mm. so that so that Joy can can live and go do because he knows uh, well she's already forgotten this is this is what needs to happen. This is what needs to happen. Oh and that, that is the greatest lesson you can teach anyone is, is to like to put others before you. So hard for people to do. And Bing Bong does it in a way that takes himself completely out of the picture. And that, it, man, that moment in, in that movie is, there's, there's few movies that I can think of that, that make me feel the way I do when that's happening. When Bing Bong decides to sacrifice himself, you know, so that joy can go on. It's just fucking amazing and, and then if you know you got lewis black and bill Hader and these just crazy kind of legends uh comedic legends uh amy poehler of course and they, they crush it they knock it out of the park uh the, this movie hits on all cylinders with the depth uh i think i think <clears throat> i think soul has its issues with its storyline where it's kind of like hmm if you think too hard about it you're going to be you're going to kind of get into it into like a you know a weird intertwinement of, of thoughts but i think inside out actually kind of puts things in a bow and kind of makes it make sense and i, I really appreciate that about inside out i love it it's a 10 out of 10 movie for me 
remarkable. Inside Out, I will never forget sobbing my eyes out at the movies when we lost Bing Bong. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's even hearing his name, I just start thinking about it again. And I'm just like, oh God. It's <laughs> there's so many great films in Pixar's catalog that some of them are are gonna get sacrificed and Inside Out did not make my my cut. It, hey, it's it's tight, man. There's 19 movies that missed the cut here. That's so hard. <laughs> so difficult. Brianna, your number two. And she was also inside out. <laughs> but I like it from I didn't watch it until a little later after it was released, I believe. But I personally liked it because I was one of those kids that would sit and wonder why your brain works the way that it does and how it does and that being a kid you kind of like you animated just a little bit because that's what makes sense mm -hmm. and so it was cool watching a movie like inside out where you're seeing how they are showing you how the mind of like a child works and how it's set up and all that and I felt like it was pretty close to how my brain was as a kid. And I was like, I wonder how that works and how, and it's like the pictures, it was cool to see it like from my mind on screen and be kind of like, oh, they're playing with the same idea I was. And it was cool seeing her um, imaginary friend Bing Bong and how he still thought about her after being forgotten. And that was still his number one priority was her happiness and her well-being and him sacrificing himself for her was something that I feel like, like you pointed out, Pixar has the opportunity to do in some movies, but never really takes it. And they took it in Inside Out. And though it was really sad, I feel like it made the movie stand out. Yep. hundred percent. Disney movies, Pixar movies don't sometimes that, that that's that's what holds it back to me yeah is like sticking to that to that sometimes you're gonna lose shit you know sometimes in life it's not gonna be all fucking you know rainbows and yeah you're, you're like it's gonna be hard and you're gonna lose people and people are gonna be mean to you and it's an easier way i feel like of consuming that idea of watching inside out as compared to soul where if you do you said like you said think about soul and like what it's trying to tell you for too long you could put yourself in a really weird yeah headspace kind of like, wait a minute yeah. inside out does kind of present it to you in this way where it's almost like consumable like where you're not yes. like going into a spiral afterwards which, yeah, yeah it's yeah. kiddish enough to like with the train of thought yeah. and all that stuff it's like okay this yeah this kind of makes sense i kind of i kind of i understand what they're doing I mean, soul soul you need to see a few times before <laughs> i feel like you need to be in a certain mental space to watch soul i remember after it was done me and you were kind of like huh but like not in like an unsatisfied I, way it was more so yeah. like what what do I do with this? Yeah, what do I do with myself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the family group chat after we all watched it on Christmas, everybody had like the same kind of thought process. Like, oh, that was a little deep. I mean, Taylor is still, I don't think, wants to consume it just for that reason alone. Yeah, because it's, it's tough. It's tough stuff. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I love Inside Out. It's both our number two uh, movie that's very, very important to us. That's one of our favorite dates, I think. You know, seeing that, yeah. seeing that outside, that was fun. That's nice. Um, yeah, that movie's uh, unique in a way that, you know, and no other, very few films can kind of showcase how our emotions work like that. It's really powerful. I know that's being taught in certain like places to help kids kind of manage their emotions. It's a film that's become like a crucial part of education, which yeah. is pretty sweet. Which is, they, they've been doing that now for 26 years. <laughs> yes, they are. Pixar is right there to teach us teach us some some big stuff oh um my number two is so insanely close to being my number one now i am so i'm i'm not i was thinking the whole time we've been doing this like should i flip them it's that good and this is the first time i'd ever seen this movie and i've been thinking like how many years have I wasted not knowing about this? It, and I'm, yeah, number two is Coco. Yeah, you've wasted four years is what you've done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Coco is a pure work of art. It is one of the most powerful animated films I've ever seen. It is a cultural celebration. It teaches kids about death, about family, about honor, loyalty, betrayal, everything. And it, 
is a tearjerker. I was sobbing last night in my apartment, just like, oh my God. Like twice I got like emotionally hit in the fucking head with a sledgehammer and just bawled my eyes out. I yeah. couldn't I had to like pause and regroup for a second to get back into the movie. I was like, this is incredible. How have I missed out on this? Why didn't I watch this when it came out? It blew my fucking mind. It's an absolute masterpiece. And honestly, it could be my number one choice. It really could. Uh, in fact, as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to move it up to a 10. It is, it is a fantastic movie. And I'm, yeah, I'm going to be shouting that from the rooftops pretty much forever now. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I knew I knew that was gonna happen. I knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, I was wondering why you hadn't seen it. Well, we were we worked we worked at Draft House when it came out. Uh, so I just couldn't believe that it took this long for you to connect because this movie is is all the things you like. You know, it heavily involves music. The Latino culture in it is fucking cool as shit, and the the vocal performances they get from different kinds of people is yeah. unbelievable. The, the plot twists were actually shocking. Yeah. You know, I actually was like, holy shit, several times. It, the story is so tight and so good. And the mm. characters are so vibrant and the animation is beautiful. It's, I, I feel like Squidward after he ate a Krabby Patty for the first time. Like it's just yeah. like, it yeah. like wired my brain. I'm just, yeah. It's all I can think about. It, oh. And then I watched Brave immediately after and I was like, this kind of sucks. So maybe I should have flipped that. <laughs> That's unfair to Brave. Yeah, you just watched, yeah, one of yeah. Pixar's masterpieces. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Mm. Uh, I love that. I love that so much. That's your number two. Um, well, Brianna, you have nowhere else to go, so. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. You already said your number two, so go ahead. My number one is Coco. Yay! <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. The first time I watched it was actually when Willow was just turning one and I so you put, didn't see it in theaters either no what and the let hell me, let me let me let me <laughs> i'm the only one let me get there so i didn't watch it when we worked at draft house because honestly i had i didn't have low expectations i just didn't expect anything and so when i'm how dare, in, how dare you i judged it i same. judged it same I'm like, you judge it too yeah i was like this looks like it's gonna not be <laughs> up my alley at all yeah, and oh. then I like I was running the theater, and then you could tell that I wasn't paying attention to anything going on the screen. I don't know how I was managing to do that because so many movies were ruined for me just running in the theater alone. But like I was tuned out, and as we're waiting, like clean, there's like servers coming out and saying people are crying. I was like, people are crying over this movie, and I was like, what? And me yeah. judging it heavily, not even seeing it yet. I'm like, that was that's ridiculous. <laughs> and so I watch it with Willow. Um, I think right at the start of quarantine and I'm sitting here with all the plots and like the plot twists and the meanings. I'm just like, Oh shit, this is, I was not mentally prepared to jump into this with my small infant child. And so I'm sitting there on the couch, like by myself. So I feel like I can fully feel all the emotions and I'm just like crying. I mean, the, the mama Coco scene alone, I was like, Oh no. And he's like singing to her. I felt everything. I love the colors. I love how heavily influenced Latino culture was involved in the movie. And even though it wasn't anything like I could personally relate to, I like seeing a difference of like, I guess, representation in Pixar that was cool to like sit and I was like, this is actually happening and they're doing such a great job with it. And I have friends who are, heavily involved in that culture and they're just like this was really cool to see representation for me on the screen and so yeah. it was nice to finally sit down and stop judging it and just watch it and it took me by surprise knocked the wind out of me oh yeah it <laughs> i love the concept of it's up to the living to remember the dead that mm -hmm. you're never really gone if you're remembered i i love that that's such yeah. a great idea and such a great concept. I want to go to the, I want to die and end up in the Mexican afterlife. That looked nice. It looked, it looked nice. 
Yeah, I definitely yeah. want to hang out there have a few drinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what an evil bad guy. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I was like watching this like I, I know this is not like so foreign for Pixar. I was like, he he just murdered someone. I was like, well, it's just- weird to see it. Like we've heard of murder, but we rarely see it happen. Yeah, and I was like, oh, this is dark. I was like, this is the first instance. I was like, this is not going well. <laughs> just straight up murder the dude. <laughs> oh my! I'm so happy I have that movie in my life now. It's yeah. I feel like it made me a better person. <laughs> yeah. It's- Oh, that movie is gold. It, yeah, everyone needs to see that. It really, like, that movie proves exactly how strong and powerful Pixar is at creating a film. That that movie really shows the scope of what they can do. Uh, props. Major yeah. props. Great, yeah. Sure. Greatness. Coco. That's it, yeah. It's not. It's not mine, but I knew it was going to be in both of y'all. So I just knew. I knew Connor was going to be floored by it. <laughs> I knew it, and I, I. I've known you. You loved it for a while now, Brianna, and I. I know you really just really like the the music. Willow likes the music in it, and we'll play in the car sometimes. To just a, a spectacular movie. Mm-hmm. Definitely to me, one of their best movies. It's got one of their three or three to five best movies. And I think I, I think I am hit by it, but I haven't had that moment yet. You know, when you watch Pixar movies, yeah, there's always a moment or like a time you watch it when it just kind of, oh, fuck. And The Incredibles took a while for it to do that to me. Yeah. I remember The Incredibles because I didn't, I, I wasn't ready to grapple with it. And I think maybe with Coco, I'm not ready to take on some of those ideas. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's really saying something when you're talking about animated movies. I love the how you I, call emotional I, strength. Pixar hits you with as an oh fuck moment. That's perfect to yeah. describe it. Oh, Pixar's fuck. oh fuck moment. Yeah. The way I see it with film is those moments aren't up to me. Those moments are up to the film. The film does that to me. I don't get to pick and choose when a movie affects me. To me, it's it, it happens with like with you know completely out of my control. And Coco did that to me because I was I went in thinking this is going to be probably a you know a musical comedy about the afterlife and i go in and it's a it's a drama about life and death and completely you know wrecked me so i love when that happens when a movie just catches me by surprise and suddenly i'm in a different place that's it's a great feeling yeah like bernie mac says in transformers you know pick you know driver don't pick the car car pick the driver (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I love that. I love that. So, uh, I think, I think I know where your number one is, Connor. And I I think, I think, I think we have the same one here. (laughs) Uh, but you know, you definitely talked about wanting to reverse it. I don't feel that way. I don't, uh, wanting to put Coco there. I I have never questioned once (laughs) with any Pixar movie. None of them come close to Toy Story for me. The one that started it all 1995. Uh, probably one of the tightest movies ever, you know, it's an hour and 20 minutes and manages to tackle so many things within that time frame, and is still to me the funniest one out of all the Pixar movies cracks me up still, <laughs> still every, every character from the little shark. Yeah. Howdy, howdy, howdy. And the, and, the, and Rex and ham and slinky dog. You know, I, I love every character. I love Woody and Buzz. I love Sid. Sid's a great villain. He's he's this dopey kid that you just you want to see him get taken down, you know? Like, <laughs> fuck this guy, you know. He's yeah. trying to like burn and light these toys on fire. Let's let's kick his ass. And and this is, you know, this is the first one. This is the one where they decide who they are. Decide who they are as a company, decide what they're going to represent, and that is identity uh, through and through. Is be yourself. Find out who you are, be yourself. It's okay to kind of try different things to figure that out. And I think Toy Story just set the tone, set the tone for one of the most impressive, powerful companies, you know, in in movie history. Uh, They continue to kind of top themselves with Onward and Soul and Luca, these movies that are amazing. But Toy Story is the one that I'm always down to watch, no matter what's happening 
it's one of my favorite 90s movies just period forget animated it's just one of my favorite 90s movies one of my favorite one of the only tens i have you know one of the one of the few you know tens that i can I, i've been able to call it that since i was you know four or five years old it's john, john lasseter you know it's like it's just a masterpiece from him and I'm, I'm really grateful for them starting this and people recognizing and understanding it and it's just now a, t- a part of the movie industry's dna you know pixar cannot be you can't overlook them their movies are too good yeah straight up uh my number one is actually cars and uh i'm totally fucking with you guys no it's um <laughs> it's toy story it's, it's, it's yeah, easily it's toy story. <laughs> yeah it's toy you imagine story. all that build up and it's just it's cars <laughs> yeah that's why that's why i don't like luca because they stole from that <laughs> no 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 i i do i do think uh you know we've kind of been avoiding movies like i've specifically avoided saying ratatouille because i didn't know you know if you would have it fucking love ratatouille <laughs> ratatouille's great yeah i adore the hell out of it you know there's movie it, it really they really have something to offer um you mentioned brave if you didn't watch Brave after Coco, it is oh, good. Yeah. Brave is pretty good. <laughs> I've watched it a few times, and I'm just like, yeah, this movie doesn't get a lot of credit that it deserves. Yeah, it's I like Brave. Good. I like Brave. I also love, yeah, that it's centered around like a strong female character. I just also really love the Brave joke in Wreck-It Ralph. Yes. The second one. Yeah. Where, oh, like, yeah they can't too. understand a word she's saying with yeah. all the other Disney princesses, <laughs> and then she's like, what's she saying? She's like, oh, we don't know. She's from the other studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. So good. <laughs> One that we have not like that has not come up in the slightest is Wally. Oh yeah, I like Wally too. Yeah, I forgot about Wally. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, I, Wally's Wally's fantastic. I watched that for the second time uh, a few months ago when we did our uh, in Bruges Oscar Sunday, mm. and it's a delightful little film. It's you know it's nothing all that special, but it's it's a nice little love story between a robot and a much shittier robot. Uh. I, I don't know if I'd watch it again. It's cute. I think Pixar's done better love stories, but yeah. not terrible. Yeah. I've seen it once, and that was the beginning of quarantine. <laughs> I was like, I haven't watched it yet. Might as well. I was like, oh, it's it, cute. It's yeah, it's it's uh, a tough one. You know, you're watching some things. They're kind of predicting some things, and yeah, it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> we're all going to be just a sea of fat shits and chairs. In, yeah uh, i can't wait i can't wait uh, <laughs> the uh yeah so toy story has been one of my favorite movies since i could breathe yeah uh, yeah <laughs> it's hilarious it holds up the voice talent is incredible the characters are vibrant and unforgettable it's it's got three sequels that all are really good in their own way uh oh, yeah I avoided sequels specifically on my list because I didn't want to crowd it. But Toy Story 2 and 3, and to an extent 4, really could have made a spot on this list if I was doing sequels. And Toy Story represents to me the beginning of an incredible generation of animated films that changed the game and showed people what we could do with animation. And... I mean, it got a special achievement Oscar for being the first computer generated film ever. Yeah. And to, that it still holds up 26 years later is a remarkable feat of computer engineering. Hell yeah. Even when every young boy in the film looks exactly like Andy, but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fun movie about, you know, an unlikely friendship and like create, you know, buzz convinced he's a space ranger is so funny. Just, Woody harassing him and like, you know, look at Alien, all that shit is so funny. It is hilarious. God, Tom Hanks is crushing it. <laughs> He's having so much fun with the screenplays and the Toy Stories. Uh, every, every single side character. And then the stuff like with Zerg and the in Toy Story 2, just genius. Al's toy barn. Just, the, scene, the scene with the guy who's fixing Woody up yeah. in Toy Story 2. One of the most breathtaking things you can watch. In, I've in never film. understood why, but I am mesmerized by that scene. Yeah, every little thing that he does, you know. Uh, oh man, the attention, the attention to detail right from the get go. Pixar's already been good at that. Yeah, they yeah. just it, it's 
mind blowing. And in Toy Story, there's a few times where you're just kind of like, wait, what? You know, <laughs> this is this is changing the game. This is mm -hmm. this is the one that turned the tides to where you know animation's like totally back. And and ha they've they've outdone the regular Disney Studio movies, but just by a landslide since then. They just out. Oh, I, they, I, I barely pay attention to what Disney's launching out, but Pixar, I'm always paying attention. Hundred percent. I, when I was a kid, because of Toy Story, I wanted so badly to go to Pizza Planet. It looked like the coolest place on earth. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, I still do. I, yeah. I remember before COVID, there were plans to build one at Disney World. And I was immediately like, I'm going to fucking Disney World. I'm going to Pizza Planet. I'm yeah. fulfilling a childhood dream. I'm going to Pizza Planet. Yeah. <laughs> Pizza Planet. Yeah, but it's just culturally, Toy Story is... You know, you are a toy. All, I love that in that bit, Buzz is talking about the fucking Death Star. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like yes. I noticed that later on as a, as a like younger adult, I'm like, he's 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 fucking Princess. He's Princess Leia right now. He's and, and, making um, plans. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, uh, Emery. Uh, R. Uh, R. Lee Emery plays the Sarge. Sarge. The yeah, yeah. Like that's that that's that's not for kids. That's for movie fans. <laughs> that that little bit is like, oh, here's people who've watched movies. You might recognize that voice. Well, that's because, yeah, he, you do recognize that voice. So you cool. are an absolute disgrace. Yeah, it's it's so good. <laughs> John Rickles is Mr. Potato Head. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. I had a little when I was a kid, I had so many Toy Story to like themed toys as a kid. Yeah. This shit was crazy to me. I had a Buzz Lightyear, I had a Woody. I had a Mr. Potato Head that had a button that would say movie quotes and it would go, you uncultured swine and things like yeah. that. And yeah. <laughs> I still use that. Like I'll, I'll, I love that line. You uncultured swine. I Perfect. use that all the time. If I, if I find out like somebody close to me hasn't seen a certain movie, I, that's what I'll call them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love, love Toy Story. Oh man. The aliens. The yeah. Aliens the aliens. claw. The claw. Oh my God. Goes in. I love, I, I love when they're in Sid's room, how fucking creepy it is. And yeah. all the other, you know, all the other toys the that have kind of like toys. put themselves together. Yeah. The fuck. I love when the, the little guy on the rolly thing comes out and just turns off the flashlight and Woody loses his shit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> in the end, when they like, they all gang up on Sid and like, Woody does that so play nice thing. I laugh every time. It's so good. Yeah. We've been watching you. Yeah. So play. <laughs> Who are you nice. calling busted buster? <laughs> that would scare the absolute shit out of me. Yeah, me too. Oh, man. Amazing. As Amazing. much as I love Coco, Toy Story has a special firm place in my heart that can't be broken. It's, I'm sorry. <laughs> But it's it's, it's going to take a lot. Yeah, it's going to take a lot to, to snag that spot. And if you want to hear more Toy Story, all you got to do is wait about a week. So <laughs> Yeah. We're going to go ham on that shit in about a week. Yeah. Can't wait. Oh, this was so much fun. Let's recap our top fives. Sounds good. All right. Why don't you go first, Austin? Uh, let me pull up on my phone. Sorry, I exited out of our, our proper... Well, I can remember. Uh, mine is Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, A Bug's Life, Inside Out, and Toy Story. Brianna, there you go. Mine was Toy Story 4 as my 5, Finding Nemo is 4, Up as 3, Inside Out is 2, and Coco as number 1. Coco. Very nice. I had uh, number 5, Monsters, Inc., Number four, Onward. Number three, The Incredibles. Number two, Coco. Number one, Toy Story. Beautiful. Coco getting a lot of love there. I love oh, it. as it deserves. I can't believe it's not on yours, honestly. Like, you knew how good it was, and you never told me. <laughs> yeah, I saw it in theaters. Yeah, I've seen it a few times. Uh, you've been holding on to this beautiful work of art, and you've just been keeping it to yourself. Yeah, no, I, I actually think Coco... Aside, from, I, I think I think it probably should have got set. Like, if I were voting, like I think I would give it second place at the Oscars, uh, behind Get Out. I think it's probably the strongest 2017 movie aside from Get Out. Or just if you if you like storytelling, this movie's gonna do some stuff to you. I think I think it's right up there. Oh yeah, fantastic! This was a blast. I really enjoyed this Pixar. I 
I love the unpredictability of this particular show because you never know what it's going to be. Could be a Disney movie, could be a horror movie, could be a musical. You never know. Yes. It's up to the fate. You know, it's we leave it up to the gods or the studios, as they're lame as call. Thanks for listening, everybody. Next week's big movie is the long awaited F9, the ninth film in the Fast and Furious franchise, the fastest the furiousest movie we've gotten <laughs> yet. Uh, Buckle up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can catch that in theaters. Uh, we'll also be discussing the Hulu horror film False Positive and the Netflix action thriller The Ice Road, Liam Neeson's second ice-related action movie. Nice. First, if you count the gray. <laughs> <laughs> Expect a lot of half-baked duds next week. Or maybe they'll surprise us. I doubt it, but, you know, here we are. (laughs) Check out a triple threat of Austin, Caleb, and myself on Wednesday's Filmgasm with Upgrade and a trip down memory lane on Oscar Sunday with Toy Story. Uh, Can't wait for both of those. It's going to be so much fun. Oh, yeah. Upgrade. Love that movie. (laughs) Have a great week, everyone, and keep watching movies.